طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Uh, welcome all. Uh, this is the second lecture and it is actually the first lecture in uh, breast cancer. It's so going to be followed by uh, breast cancer 2. In this uh, talk, I'm going to cover the following points some backgrounds, basology, clinical feature, international TNM. An American Joint uh, Committee of Cancer Staging Investigation. Uh, why breast cancer is important? Actually, because it is the most common cancer in women worldwide, and it constitutes almost 23 percent of all cancer, and it is the most frequent cause of cancer deaths in women. In Africa. It is ranked the second with an incidence of 21% and mortality of 16%. And we are not different from the African country and from the worldwide. Here in Sudan, it ranked number one. The second being cervical carcinoma in women. And the incidence is almost 24% or 25% with a mortality of uh, 14.5. The majority actually breast cancer are sporadic, with only 10% have genetic factor, have a family history. For example, in pre-menopausal women, 25% breast cancer care if there is a family history, and post-menopausal, 13% is a risk factor. What are the frequencies of breast carcinoma in various anatomical sites? Usually, the breast is being divided into five areas or sites. Upper outer quadrant, upper inner quadrant, lower outer quadrant, lower inner quadrant, and nibid area complex. This cancer is being found to be more frequent in the upper half, constituting 60%, while the 40% for the nibid area complex and the lower half. In the upper half, almost 45% in upper outer quadrant and 15 in the inner outer quadrant. Nibid area complex, 25%, lower outer quadrant, 10%, and lower inner quadrant is 5%. The risk factor actually is common in uh, white people with respect to race and it's common in elder females rather than young female and the family, if there is a family history, especially uh, family history of breast cancer in mother, sister or daughter, then the risk is very high. Genetic factor if the patients have BRCA1 mutation or two, then they are at higher risk than those without. If there is previous history of endometrial cancer or uh, cancer in the other breast, the risk is high. And the proliferative form of uh, fibrocystic disease or fibrocystic disease with atypia, then they are atypical cells, then at a higher risk. If the patients have an early menarche under the age of 15, uh, 12, sorry, or late menopause after the age of 15, they are at risk. Those nulliprous or late first pregnancy, they are at higher risk as well. This is a case that we operated on him the child of 13 years old. Actually, he is in Rabah. So, Rabah today, in a little aviot, he present with breast carcinoma. Advanced late breast cancer, stage 3. And the auxiliary lymph node that we cleared, almost 13 out of 15 lymph nodes were positive. 
to age although it is common in elderly yet no age is an exception actual breast cancer pathologically either it is ductal carcinoma or labular carcinoma and ductal cancer which arise from the large or intermediate sized ducts and uh, lobular carcinoma from the terminal ducts of the labules and either of them might be invasive or uh, inside and this is a normal breast with the major duct intermediate duct and lobular duct if it is occur in the major duct without any invasion of the surrounding this is ductal carcinoma in situ if involve the major duct with invasion this is an invasive likewise the labular in the terminal uh, duct labules histologically these are the different types infiltrating carcinoma non-invasive colloid papillary medullary tubular juvenile but the most common is the infiltrating type Sorry. This is one of the studies that has been done in the Roman Teaching Hospital uh, and it showed that ductal carcinoma uh, constitute 76.5% uh, according to the international literature. Spread actually in any cancer, not only the breast, spread either direct extension, lymphatic or uh, through blood system. Their extension it might involve superficially the skin or deeply. If the skin gets involved it might be dimpled or there is limited uh, retraction or ulceration. Deeply it might involve the major surface anterior or the chest wall. Uh, to be aware of lymphatic, if there is BD or rank, this is due to uh, cutaneous lymphatic obstruction. Lymphatic obstruction and the skin is going to be beaten by the orifice of the hair falcons or sweat gland or sebaceous glands. So, dermal involvement, BD or rank, skin nodule, cancer in Kuriasi. Axillary lymph nodes might present as well to internal cirrhosis, subraclef lymph nodes might be involved, and this is N3 as you are going to see inshallah, abdominal, groin, mediastinal, contralateral axillary lymph nodes all might be involved through lymphatic spread. Through the bloodstream it goes to the lungs, liver, bones, brain, ovary or suprarenal glands. Prognostic factor, actually these are very important that determine the prognosis of patients after treatment, the number of axillary lymph nodes involved, the size of the tumor, and the grade. Other prognostic factor, but are not as significant as these three, were the vascular invasion and the hormone receptor status osteogenic receptor, progesterone receptors, or HER2, human epidermal cross factor receptor, or histological type. Uh, this is a prognostic index by which you can uh, forecast or predict the prognosis of patients based on the uh, tumor size lymph node involvements and the grades. Nottingham prognostic index if the value of the MBI is less than 2.4 then the prognosis is excellent 10 year survival in the region of 95 percent between 2.4 to 3.4 it is good prognosis moderate prognosis between uh, 3 to 5.4 and very poor prognosis if the score is more than 5.4 and this MBI is calculated as follow 
tumor size plus the grade of the tumor plus the number of free fluid involved and the equation uh, we we multiply the tumor size in centimeter by 0.2 plus the grade and leaf nodes uh, how we determine the grades and the uh, lymph nodes grades is usually determined uh, by histopathology and the number of lymph nodes whether there is no lymph nodes one to three or more than three. Uh, lymph nodes no lymph nodes we are going to score one if the number of lymph nodes involved one to three this is two more than three lymph nodes this is three and the grade as we mentioned it will be based on uh, modified uh, plume richardson grading well differentiated more differentiated or anaplastic poorly differentiated cancer poorly three moderate two and well differentiated one this is a study that's been done here in the Roman teaching hospital about the prognostications of breast cancer using mbi is the these patients and it's been published in uh, 2014 and it shows that most of our patients have a poor prognosis all uh, as roughly half of them 48 percent they have their mbi score greater than 5.4 histologically these are the different types infiltrating this is another one and this is another one this is how i will present it is late and high score Keep features almost 70 percent of the patients they present with a painless lump that's discovered by the patient himself in 90 percent uh, less frequent uh, symptoms they press pain redness generalized hardness enlargement or shrinking nibble there might be some erosion discharge retraction itching or enlargement as well axilla they might be uh, axillary swelling or masses of the arm and maybe the fairest symptoms and this is very rare yet we have seen a number of patients their uh, main physical findings is axillary lump and it's proved to be breast cancer uh, press examination is very important and I usually start with respection with the patient seated and arm by the side we are looking for for the side for the symmetry nipple retraction edema redness uh, retraction of the skin and here this is nipple uh, retraction evidence here is some nipple retraction plus nodule which is visible and here the slide another one in the nipple asymmetry and subtraction or dimbling can be accentuated or made more clear and obvious if we are the patient to raise her arms above her head or raising the hands or pressing the hand on the hip and by doing so we are going to contract the back major muscle these are not elevated as high as possible nevertheless it shows that uh, there is asymmetry between the two breasts and the mass become prominent this is a mass with the skin dimpling here then dimple again uh, palpation we examine the patient uh, supine and seated we put a bellow below the shoulder of the breast that we are going to assess and we examine with the flat of our palmar aspect of the fingers with the hands of the patients being abducted in a sitting position we are going to assess the axillary group of lymph nodes and subraclav as well breast cancer usually consists of non-tender fair mass nipple retraction erosion discharge asymmetry as mentioned 
and the international TNM and uh, American Joint Committee on uh, Cancer uh, is going to elaborate more or uh, to explain the TNM. Uh, what is the T of this patient? What is the tumor of this patient? T uh, for the tumor, N for lymph node, and M for metastasis. This TNM, it makes people speak the same language if you describe the breast cancer in the TNM. And the church based on this. What is a T? T might be tumor size, might be T0, T1, T2, T3, T4. But whenever you found skin involvement, this is straightforward T3. T1, it is less tumor size, is less than 2 cm. Can be further divided into 2, 1, A, B, and C. If it is less than 0.5, this is T1A. Between 0.5 to 1, this is T1B. Greater than 1, but less than 2, this is T1C. T2 between 2 to 5 cm. And T3 is more than 5 cm in greater diameter. And T4, if it is involved deeply or superficial deep fixation or superficial fixation then this is t4 as we have seen in the previous uh, photo the skin was involved make it uh, t4 this is uh, t0 no evidence of primary tumor and tis this is carcinoma in situ, ductal carcinoma in situ or labial carcinoma in situ. In situ, it means that there is no invasion. Prognostic factor. Actually, these are very important that determine the prognosis of patients after treatment. The number of axillary lymph nodes involved, the size of the tumor, and the grade. T4 extension to the chest wall or the skin. If the rib are involved or intercostal muscles are involved or serratus anterior, this is chest wall involvement, but not back major. Skin, if there is video range ulceration, satellite nodule. Sorry. Regional lymph nodes, if you cannot assess the regional lymph nodes, NX. N0, no region lymph node meds. Clinically, you cannot detect axillary lymph nodes. N0. If there is one epsilateral mobile lymph node, this is N1. If they are fixed epsilaterally axillary lymph nodes, 2. If involvement of supraclavic lymph node or lymphedema, this is 3. Metastasis M1, there is metastasis M0, no meds. X, this term meds can assess. What is the stage? Having known the T in M, we have to convert this into a stage. This patient develop uh, lymphedema post mastectomy, and actually it's okay usually if we dissect the axial clearance and uh, we remove all tissues around the axillary vein then this might and the patient might end up with this but if this is a presentation before the patient being operated then this is uh, lymphedema and it is n3 we have to convert the tnm into staging A stage one if there is no palpable lymph nodes and the tumor size less than 2 cm. This is stage 1. Stage 2a, if there is no lymph node and the tumor between 2 to 5, or 
there is epsilateral mobile lymph nodes and the tumor is less than 2. B, if no lymph nodes but, the but T3 or epsilateral mobile lymph nodes with T2. 3A, if there is fixed epsilateral axillary lymph nodes with T1, 2 or 3 or mobile lymph nodes with T3. The rest, any T or any N. This is stage 3B. N3 with any T or T4 with any N. If the patient has T4 like the previous patients with satellite nodule, ulceration, skin involvement, superficial or deep, then this is T4 and it is straightforward, this is stage 3B. Or if the patients add lymphedema or supracleft lymph nodes, then this is stage 3B despite the size of the tumor. If the patient has evidence of distant meds, then this is fourth. non centenary lymph node stays in patient with breast cancer or in Durman Teaching Hospital. This is again one of the studies that has been done here in Durman Teaching Hospital in the year uh, 2013. And uh, from this study, we found that almost patients with uh, stage 1, 23%, stage 1, T1, N0, M0, stage 2A, T2, N0, M0, B, T3, N0, M0, or T2, N1, and this is based on uh, TNM staging. Tribal assessment is very important. By tribal assessment, we mean that patients uh, with uh, breast cancer should be assessed clinically first by doing history and physical exam then we have to do some sort of uh, tissue diagnosis through cutting biopsy histopathology or FNA sometimes now it is not very uh, alizima yani to operate on patients diagnose of diagnose as breast cancer based on um, FNA, we have to have a tissue diagnosis rather than cytology. And the third part is the imaging, either ultrasound or mammography. Uh, what investigation that should be done for patients with breast cancer or suspected of having breast cancer? We do actually this investigation either to prove that this is a case of breast cancer and we do some investigations to stage the patient. Biopsy, imaging and laboratory investigation. Biopsy either FNA, true cut needle biopsy or coarse tissue or large needle biopsy, open biopsy, imaging, ultrasound, mammography, MRI and some uh, imaging for distant meds, chest x ray CTs, laboratory ESR, alkaline phosphatase, calcium, and some tumor markers. The diagnosed breast cancer depends upon examination of tissue or cell. This is usually provided by biopsy, and there are different types of uh, biopsy. But treatment should never be undertaken with an equivocal histological or cytological diagnosis. If it's query breast cancer, you should not operate based on this report of uh, histopathologist. We have to have a solid diagnosis. The safest course is biopsy examination of all suspicious passes on physical exam or suspicious masses on mammography. 90% of the lesion clinically sought to be cancer proof on biopsy to be malignant. 
so you should not rely on clinical examination. Hence, the importance of triple assessment. And 30% of lesions believed to be benign are found to be malignant. So clinical pressure alone is not enough to diagnose the patients. We have to confirm. A breast mass should not be followed without historical diagnosis. Don't send patients home telling him that this is a P9. Unless you have a solid diagnosis, you can sit on it. If an A useful, cell can be aspirated by a small needle by a Very easy, no morbidity, less expensive, but it is operator dependent. In high expert cytologists, the accuracy might be might reach up to more than 90%. The main disadvantage of a FNA, it requires skill pathologist, very expert in uh, cytology. Sampling problem, deep lesions might be missed. Difficult to distinguish none from invasive carcinoma. This is cannot be differentiated involvement of the basement membrane unless there is tissue, there is histology. FN8 give a false positive diagnosis in the region of 2% and a false negative in 10%. What we mean by false negative means that patients has breast cancer. In every 10 patient with breast cancer, one might be missed. The report might be benign press problem. Therefore, this 10% we should not miss at all. And we have to do histopathology. Most experienced clinician would not leave a suspicion dominant mass in the breast even where if an A is negative. Because there is a region for 10% of the patients to be missed unless the clinical diagnosis, pre imaging study and surgical studies were all in agreement. All of them. If you suspect clinical disease malignancy and the FNA turn to be benign, you have to believe your clinical acumen and you go further for uh, tissue diagnosis and imaging. This is the true cut needle, uh, and uh, here we are. I'm taking a biopsy. It's just uh, local anesthesia. We just nip the skin, and we take five to six cores, sending for histopathy. This is uh, how it looks. This is a cheese, and this is a needle, and uh, we push the needle inside. The tumor, we advance the needle, we slide the sheath over and then we withdraw. And this is clear here. This is the sheath, the outer one, and the needle in the middle. And this is the groove where biopsy is going to be taken. We push the needle inside the mass and then we slide the sheath over and we withdraw the needle with the sheath and the tissue. This is a uh, large needle or uh, through cut needle biopsy to remove a core of tissue with a large cutting needle. Easy, effective, it is an office procedure. The main problem is sampling error as we have seen in the FNA if it is deep. And this is if it is small sometimes might be missed and the result will be uh, no malignancy. The need for organ biopsy now nowadays it's not being used. Earlier it is because there is no uh, availability of uh, true cut needle biopsy. But if the true cut needle biopsy is not diagnostic, we have to resolve. We have to reach a diagnosis. Should be done under local anesthesia prior to uh, definitive treatment. And now we didn't uh, do it because we have to plan the 
procedure once you have to have a solid diagnosis then proceed for the definitive treatment but if we take open biopsy this is stage one step two then we take the patient for definitive treatment the main disadvantage of a FNA it requires skilled pathologists very expert in uh, cytology sampling problem deep lesions might be missed difficult to distinguish noisy patients we have to confirm a breast mass should not be followed without historical diagnosis don't send patients home telling him that this is a P9 ultrasonography basically is being done to differentiate cystic from solid lesion and may reveal features highly suggestive of malignancy such as irregular margin or solid mass if the tumor is palpable and feel like a cyst aspirate the fluid may be the diagnosis if it is not bloody then that's all and uh, does not have to be examined cytologically if the mass does not require no further uh, diagnostic test is necessary non palpable mammographic density should be investigated ultrasound first and then we have if it is proved to be solid then we have uh, to take uh, ultrasound guided needle biopsies the need for organ biopsy now nowadays it's not being used earlier it is because there is no uh, availability of uh, true cut needle biopsy but if the true cut needle biopsy is not diagnostic we have to resolve mammography it is uh, used uh, actually technique has been used early uh, screening program and this is very useful for early breast cancer can can detect breast cancer before mass is palpable and even it can detect the mass two years before it become palpable slowly growing cancer can be identified at least two years before reaching a size detectable by blood patient ultrasonography basically is being done to differentiate cystic from solid lesion and may reveal features highly suggestive of malignancy such as irregular margin or solid mass Mammography mass density Sometimes we find density alone on mammography and it might be breast cancer if it is irregular Not necessary to have classification to diagnose breast cancer density alone might be The density has irregular L or ill-defined borders and may lead to architectural distortion we can see here this is a uh, micro classification localized to one side different uh, size and shape again here as well micro classification as well we can see here it is just localized no scatter throughout the breast and this is different shape and size this is mammographic picture of density and there is no classification yet there is a speculation of the masses actually there is two masses this is one and this is one this is almost diagnostic of breast 
as well. This is race post cancer. And this is, and we can see here. And this is an MRI, it shows a mass density. Laboratory findings is R, serum alkaline phosphatase, hypercalcemia. And the ESR usually it indicates a disseminated breast cancer, serum alkaline phosphatase, if there is a poor involvement or a hepatic uh, meds, and hypercalcemia as well. All these investigations it denotes advanced breast cancer. And uh, tumor marker, carcinogenic antigen, as well as going to be high in patients with advanced breast cancer, CA15-3 and CA27-29. This marker, they are not used to diagnose breast cancer, rather than they are prognostic investigation, whether recurrence occur or not, or things are going to be flourish. Imaging for meds, we do chest x-ray, CT, and bone scan. Chest x-ray for Bermuda meds, CT for liver and brain meds, and bone scan uh, for skeletal meds. This is mammographic picture of density and there is no classification yet there is a speculation of the masses. Sir. We do actually this investigation either to prove that this is a case of breast cancer and we do some investigations to stage the patient. Thank you very much.